Connor comes back now. Now the fight is on. Now they're going to say Khabib's a champion. Connor lost his belt. Connor wants to come back and get the camp. So you're in one of two camps, right? You hate Connor McGregor or you love Connor McGregor. One thing I could tell you about Connor is he doesn't run from fights and he takes on everybody. And people can tweet me or, or whatever they email, whatever they want to do and say, well, Connor never defended his belt. You're 100% right because Connor goes after money fights. Fought Nate Diaz. He wanted to go up in weight class. He went up 20 pounds, not his weight class. He went and fought Nate Diaz, got his brains beat in, dropped back down to 155, fought Nate Diaz again, who probably could have been a professional boxer and beat him in a five round decision. Okay. Connor fights, right? And there's nobody out there that Connor has not gone up against and beat. All right. His his hands, the way he punches at that 155, no, nobody's seen that before. And we always think of big punchers as guys in the heavier weight class, the 205, the heavyweights, right? Because those are big guys. They're punching people through the walls. And you're the smaller guy. He's knocking people out. Hey, how's this happening? Man, he's got, he's got heavy fists as well, right? So Connor has beaten a lot of guys in the upper echelon of the UFC. And to me, that means a lot. He knocked out Evy Alvarez. He knocked out Jose Aldo. He knocked out Chad Mendez. He knocked out Dennis Silver. He knocked out Dustin Poirier. All these guys have fought for the title or been champions, right? He's knocked them all out. He had a decision against Max Holloway. And during the fight, he ended up blowing out his knee and he still continued to fight and he won a decision, okay? He beat Nate Diaz not at 175, which is not his weight, down at 155 where he should have been, and he ended up beating Nate Diaz there, okay? So I look at Khabib. He has some he has some nice fights, right? Okay, but are they the top echelon of the UFC? I mean, can we go back and look at any of Khabib's fights and say he's the best? So I always caution people, be careful of hype when you're looking at UFC, because the UFC loves to hype their fighters. Ronda Rousey, there's the girl. She gets beat twice in a row. You know, all these guys, they hype them up and they get beat. Khabib's their guy. He's undefeated, right? They're pushing this fight. All of everybody's telling you how great of a wrestler he is. To me, my last fight that he had against Ally Quinta, he did nothing. Okay. So looking at this fight, I'm looking at it one of two ways. Connor's going to do a lot either. Connor's going to do a lot of damage physically and beat Khabib within three rounds, or Khabib is going to grapple, take him to the ground, put him up against the fence, and gas Connor out. And that's one thing that Connor doesn't have is stamina and can gas him out. So I'm on the fence, right? Mm -hmm. But like I mentioned before, when I hear how great the hype is for Khabib, that scares me a little bit, right? There's a lot of hype. His grappling is amazing. When he gets someone on the fence, it's debilitating to their stamina. Connor's known to have those issues, like I mentioned before, and that goes towards Khabib's advantage. When it comes to striking and angles and standing up and leg strikes and, and back kicks, Khabib's never fought anybody. Never, never with, with Connor's stand up, with Connor's power. Never. Without, never's done it, right? Mm -hmm. So Connor needs to keep this standing up, right? On the outside. Don't let Khabib get a hold of him. I think he could do it. Uh, take his legs out early. Strike him. Let him feel your power. Okay, so let, I mentioned before, all the experts are taking Khabib right now. All the money's on Khabib, all right? The money, once it gets closer to the fight, it's all going to go on Connor. So look, I'm going over the eye test. I know it's been two years since Connor's fought in the UFC. I know he's made $100 million fighting and boxing, right? Past performance over hype of a fighter. I'm going to take this um, I'm going to take Connor right now and you can get him at plus 140. If you're going to do it, you got to take him early because the money's going to end up going on to Connor later and that's going to drop quite a bit. So, I'm going to go with Connor this fight. It was really really difficult and as I'm sitting down and I'm watching old fights and I'm thinking about it and I'm all the I mean, it's going to be hard for me to go against Connor this fight. So, if you want Connor, you probably take him now, right? Because yes, everybody 100%. and their mother is going to be betting on yes. Connor yeah, because... this weekend, changing that line. 100%. Yep. Gotcha, my man. No, it's, that's, you broke it down very well there. 
thoroughly enjoyed it. You know, it, it, it's such an amazing fight. I cannot wait to see it. I don't need any money on this fight uh, to enjoy it. I, I'm 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 super stoked about it. I'll, I, if I do pick a side here, it's going to be for a small amount, so I don't have to feel any <laughs> any type of disappointment that's, or anything. That's okay. Like I've that. done that before. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So so you know, I, I think that I think that that's where. Um, that's what I'm thinking, but, but man, I cannot wait. It's here. It's finally here. And, uh, I'm super excited. I'll be in Buffalo after the Titans, uh, bills game. I'm going to, I'm going to, we're going to find ourselves a little watering hole and, uh, and with this fight on, and we're going to definitely check it out. So er, super excited for that. Actually, it'll be on the night before after the Badger game. We're yeah. going to, we're going to go check that out. Well, that's awesome. A man, you know, another there's a there's a couple good events, uh, good fights going on. Uh, yeah. per, Ferguson and Pettis, man. Yeah, I got two more for you, and, and you nailed one of them, right? So Ferguson and Pettis. Look, I, I've been watching UFC MMA for a long time. Okay, um, it it got me into grappling myself, right? And it got me into um, um, Muay Thai. It got me onto all those things. I absolutely love it. All right, so five years ago. Anthony Pettis had one of the coolest knockouts ever I've seen against Benson Henderson, all right, in WEC. It was awesome, right? Henderson's backing up, right? Henderson's a good fighter. He's no tin can. He's he's not a, he's not Glass Joe, okay? So he's backing up, and Pettis runs at him, jumps off the fence, and does a flying kick right into the jaw of Benson Henderson, knocks him down. He gets on top of him, ends the fight, TKO. Man. Dude, it was awesome. And this was five years ago. So not everybody's watching it, right? And I'm texting people and I'm saying, did you see this fight? And they go, what are you talking about? And I said, this guy, he jumped off. He was like a ninja and he kicked somebody and then he did 10 flips. And I was going crazy. I was so excited, right? Mm -hmm. And everybody couldn't believe it. I had to find it on YouTube. I sent it to him. They go, my gosh, dude, that was awesome. That's crazy. Here's a problem. That was five years ago. And everybody in his weight class has gotten better. Pettis has lost a lot of fights, a lot of wars over the years. Okay, I'll be the first one to tell you that I took Michael Chiesa last fight against Anthony Pettis because Pettis was so piss poor against his competition. I said, there's no way Michael Chiesa is going to lose this fight. Michael Chiesa is a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He knows what he's doing. And I got embarrassed by the hype of Michael Chiesa and Pettis won. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here comes Tony Ferguson. I gave you that whole backstory before with Khabib, right? And Tony Ferguson was a champ. I like Tony a lot, right? I think he's a solid fighter. Do I think he's great, like uh, elite, super elite in one certain area? I don't. Do I think he's super great in everything? I do. I should say, I think he's elite with his conditioning, but in terms of his his uh, ground game, his his boxing, his stand up, his leg kick. Is it super elite? It's not, but it, boy, it's very good. Okay, now Tony has not lost since 2012. He's had a number of solid, de- decisive wins. He beat Kevin Lee. He beat um, Rafael dos Anjos. Okay, he beat Barbosa, and his like I mentioned, his stamina is through the roof. I don't think there's a there. I don't think this guy's ever gotten tired in his life, right? If you see the way this guy trains, you would say you're going to the hospital just watching this guy, okay? <laughs> his problem is he's a slow starter, okay? It, it, it always seems to me when you watch the fight of Tony Ferguson, his first round is always a loss. And you're walking in there and you're seeing Tony Ferguson and you're saying, oof, how's he going to win this fight? He just lost that first round. That was embarrassing, But some of the guys need that motivation. Some guys need to get hit a little bit. Some guys need to get battered a little bit. Some guys need to be taken advantage a little bit in the first round. Then that light switch turns on. That's Tony Ferguson, okay? Taking Tony Ferguson to win this fight right now, minus 350, uh, it's it's not much there, okay? I think you'll do better with investing in Bitcoin. (laughs) <laughs> Look, I, I can't lay those odds, all right? Can't, I can't do it. But here's what I'm going to do, all right? I'm going to take Tony to win inside the distance and push for a second-round finish, 
Okay, I, I think the first round, he's not going to be able to do it. But by the second round, he'll be able to finish him. Um, that's where you're going to get your best bang for your buck. Tony wants to win. He needs to win this badly. And the reason why he needs to win this badly is because he had that belt. He lost that belt because he tripped over a cord that was put there by Fox Sports because he had to do an interview and he didn't see it and he blew his knee out. So he's coming back and he's saying, I'm going to win this fight. I'm going to win this decisively because the winner of this fight is going to take on the champion who have whoever wins, Connor or Khabib, and I'm going to take that belt. So he wants to win. He's going to win decisively. I could see a second round finish by, by uh, Ferguson, okay? And he's going to take less damage and get ready sooner for his next fight. So that's what you want to do if you're going to take this fight. You want to take it second round or you want to take Tony Ferguson within the distance and win this fight. So under two and a half could be a good prop on this one is what you're trying to say, I think, as well. I, 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 I'm always scared with that two and a half, right? Because a lot of times these fighters, in my opinion, will feel each other out, right? My scare with this is Tony Ferguson is not a great starter, okay? I've never seen him go crazy in the first round and absolutely dominate somebody where they're absolutely done very quick. So if it's a feel-out round, if he's getting beat the first round, you're expecting somebody in the first two and a half minutes to finish somebody else who just beat you up a whole round? I, I'm very leery of that. I would be more comfortable in saying that he could win in the third minute, fourth minute, very close to the second round or that third round. Take Tony Ferguson with, within the distance. I'm just very scared of that two and a half. I think that you're going to get better odds with the second or third round pick. Nice, my man. Well, well said. I uh, Ferguson does beat him in reach, 76 inches to 72. When you uh, faded Pettis against, was it Kiedis? Um, Kiesa. Kiesa. That wasn't that long ago, was it? No, it wasn't. It was, I thought it was only a couple months ago, and we we yep. talked about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, yep. so, so a double fade on Pettis here, my man. That's, uh, that's, that's definitely some ballsy bets you got there, but I love it. I love the way you broke it down. I think Ferguson is out for vengeance wants his wants his belt back and uh he he feels like he's a champion right these guys that's man the fighters are a different breed right i mean he feels like he's a champ right and this this weight class is so talented at the top right now ferguson tony lee khabib connor right and then there's other guys that you could throw in there I don't think Anthony Pettis is at this level anymore. If it was five years ago when he did that ninja kick off the wall, I mean, I I think Pettis would be a plus, uh, you know, a minus 9,000 after that fight because that's how cool that was. But, man, I, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I Would you say I this know. is the best weight class in all the UFC for competition? Yeah, it's pretty, it's yes. I would say 100% yes. I mean, you've got Dustin Poirier, you know, you've got, uh, man, yeah, there's a lot of guys here in, in this weight class that are just fun and f so fun to watch and have power and want to throw, right? And they don't get tired. And this weight class, they have enough energy to to go five rounds, but they still keep that power at five rounds, right? That's, that's unheard of. You go to heavyweight fight and... Man, you expect these guys to knock somebody out within the first two rounds by because by round three they're hugging each other and they're dancing like it's the prom, okay? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the two oh five, you know, there's there's one guy really right now. There's one guy at two oh five, right? And then the one seventy five, they're still scared of each other because they're dancing, right? They can go five rounds, but they're dancing. They're scared of the power. So one fifty five, best weight class in in MMA right now, and it's right here in the UFC. So. Yeah, I, uh, whoever wins this is going to have a not going to have a cupcake after this. They're going to have a big fight with Tony Ferguson because I don't think Pettis has a shot. But nice, yeah, my man. You know, so we, we yeah we're way past our time. Let's let's break down this last one quickly in okay, a couple we'll minutes. Quick, here. All right, all right, all right. We got Volkov. We got Lewis. Right, it's a heavyweight fight. Um, I can tell you on this this fight, it, it, it's on paper it should be a slugfest. Both of these guys have power to punch through a wall. I know I've mentioned it before, but boy, it's so much fun when you see this monster punching something through a wall and they're flying out like through the wall. It, it's amazing, right? It's awesome, right? So Volkov right now is favored in this fight against Lewis, right? And Lewis is sitting here as a dog, right? So the last three fights... 
that Lewis had. Two out of the three stunk. He got 